In this video, I will be reviewing the Wavelink 10 gig network interface adapter, model WLNWP004. In the box, you will find the network adapter in an anti-static package with the pre-installed tall bracket. A small factor bracket is also included. A USB 2.0 memory stick containing the Windows 10, 11, and Linux drivers, a quick start guide, a safety brochure, and a small card with the links to the online drivers. The adapter itself is a 3.0 times 4 interface card, which must be installed in a PCIe slot that supports the X.4 transfer speed. It will not fit nor work in a PCI times 1 slot. After taking a careful look at both the supplied USB stick and those files available on the web page, I noticed that the versions appear to be the same. However, there is an additional file on the USB that is executable, and that is apparently used to install the drivers on the PC. Notably, the Windows drivers are based on the Marvell chipset according to an online README. Marvell interfaces are extremely compatible with most modern operating systems. Take note, however, the USB stick is very small and you won't be able to get anything other than driver or firmware files installed. The online quick start guide, which is not provided on the USB stick, does match the printed color version provided in the retail box. Therefore, it can easily be enlarged on any computer. For those of you who have mature vision like myself, I'm sure you'll appreciate that. I definitely do. Here is a quick overview of the features of this network interface. An RJ45 Ethernet port that delivers 10 times faster transfer speeds. A PCI 3.0 times 4 card that will work seamlessly with any PCIe times 4 times 8 or times 16 motherboard slot, ensuring perfect fit in most systems. Prior to attempting to install, you should make sure your motherboard has at least one of those wider slots available. A nice feature for gamers is the built-in quality of service technology that prioritizes bandwidth for games, ensuring a smooth and lag-free gaming experience. There is also support for jumbo frames up to 16 kilobytes, enhancing the card's capability when transferring large files. Finally, it is fully compatible with Windows 10, 11, as well as Linux 3.10 or higher. How about we get this network card installed on my test bench here? then run some performance tests. Okay, I have the card here. I really do like the heat sink on it. Good color, looks like it's pretty, keep it pretty cool, which is important for a 10 gig adapter. So let me pit it here in my test bench. I have a couple of slots. This one actually has three slots that are at least X by four. This video card is in one and there's two free ones. So I'll just pick the last slot over here. Take this off and I'll stick this in this slot over here. There we go. Let me connect up the network cable to it. And now I'm ready to power it on and see what happens here. Right now I do see lights that are on the adapter. Looks like it's in one gig mode by default. Let's power it on and see what we get. It looks like it's coming up. It looks like we're into Windows now. But right now it's showing the globe, which means, uh, and the lights went off on the adapter. Well, chances are I need to install the drivers before it's recognized. But let me log in. Not connect to the internet, so it doesn't see it. Let me switch the cable over to the onboard one gig interface on this motherboard and see what we get. Am I able to get to the internet now? Yeah, looks like it's getting to my local network now. I can go into my uh, network drive. So chances are I could go to the internet if I wanted to. Let me take a look at the device manager and see what that looks like. Well, right off the bat, it shows some warnings on two devices. And one is an ethernet controller. I'm not sure what this PCI encryption, decryption controller is. Maybe that's some feature of the motherboard. But let me look at network adapters and see what we got. And all I have here is the onboard uh, one gigabyte network adapter, part of the motherboard. 
So let me go ahead now and put the USB stick in and see if I'm able to install drivers. Well, something opened up, drive D. We'll open it. And let me go into the Windows 10 11 directory. And this is that program that I mentioned in the first part of this video. It's the installing program for the Wavelink 10 gig LAN card. Let me run that program and see what we get. Run it as administrator is fine. Looks like this is Wavelink's installing program. I think that's it. <laughs> Let me uh, see if I have to reboot it or did it go up automatically? Let me switch the, the network cable over to that. May have to reboot it in order. Oh no, the lights came on and it looks like it's in 10 gig mode. Let's take a look at the device manager again. You no, know, if that looks any different now. Oh, the other devices only has that PCI encryption thing. So let me look under network adapters. Oh, and there we go. We got a second adapter that says 10 gig Marvell Acution. Let me see if I click on that. Device is ready, it's working. See we got for Reese Advanced Settings. I have jumbo packets. I want to enable jumbo packets. See what that makes. That's 9014, one that my network currently uses because I have a 10 gig network here in my home office studio. Is it still connected? You know, it looks like it, oh, here, it took a while, but it reconnected. Okay, so now we are connected. And if you look down in the corner, we should see I have a network that I'm connected to, network access. If I take a look at my network, I see my drive S, which means we're good. Now I happen to have my file server running IPARF3. I have it running in the background on that. I use that to test my 10 gig adapters quite often. Let me see, do I have IPARF installed? So let me go ahead and uh, connect up to my server at IPARF3. Gotta run a command line. Let me just run it as administrator. Give that permissions. Now I gotta go to drive C, CD. I am in drive C. Let me do a directory. I should see iperf3 in there. I will go to it. Should see the program in there. Let me grow this guy a little bit more so we can all see this. And I will type iperf3. I3. Run this as a client. At the other end of the server. And I got to give my server address in my local network. Let's see what happens. Something wrong. I, iperf3. Sorry. iperf3 minus C. That one right now, I iperf3 client and the address. What do we got? It's running at uh, six, but sometimes you have to run iperf3 a couple of times before it goes to maximum speed. Let me try that again. Yeah, there it goes. It hit 9.45 or six. That's maximum speed that you're going to see uh, with iperf3 on a local area network like this, especially since I'm going through two hops through my network. I got a, a small switch here in my studio, and I got another one that's the main switch for the whole home office. So that's actually excellent. We're getting we're getting the uh, the 10 gig. Okay, so I think that uh, that's good enough for now. I will close out this video. If you're interested in buying this card, which was very easy to install and works at maximum speed. Make sure you do set the jumbo frames though. If you don't do that, you will tend to see you're losing a lot of potential bandwidth with a 10 gig card. That's a standard practice whenever you're setting one of those up. But you'll be able to see a link down in the notes of this video and you'll be able to order it. I highly recommend it at this point. I didn't see anything wrong with it. It was easy to install. And this particular motherboard is one that's going into my um, streaming computer as an upgrade soon because it has actually three slots that can support uh, times four or above, which is what I really need in order to put my capture card and everything else, which is also a times four card. And of course, my video card, which uh, will run at, uh, you know, times eight or times 16, depending on how it splits the uh, port. Anyway, thanks for watching.